Everybody knows that dairy is inflammatory. It can cause heart disease, it causes acne, it makes you bloated. And of course, it can cause you to gain weight like crazy. It's something you've heard a million times before and so you probably never really stopped and thought about questioning it. That was the same case for me. I thought dairy was like evil for a long time. And that was even when I was going through the four year nutrition dietetic schooling. But what if I told you that pretty much everything you've heard about dairy isn't actually true. And in fact, in most cases, is actually the complete opposite. Let's dive into it. My name's Autumn, I'm a certified clinical nutritionist with my master's nutrition human performance and the first thing that you probably heard quite a bit about especially if you're looking to achieve a weight loss goal is that dairy causes weight gain a lot of people are scared to include dairy or they immediately remove it when they're looking to achieve a weight loss goal because it's higher in fat so because of this they think it'll cause them to gain weight but research is actually showing this isn't really the case at all in fact full fat dairy products have actually been found to be inversely related to obesity this means that it can actually be protective against weight gain literally the exact opposite what you've heard. What researchers are theorizing is that because full fat dairy products contain both high amounts of high quality protein and high quality fats, it does such a great job of raising our satiety hormones, peptide YY and CCK, that it helps prevent further snacking or sugar cravings that would normally cause weight gain. Now this is not the case, however, when you start to pair dairy with refined grains or sugar. Think milkshakes or ice cream or cheese and crackers or cheese with bread. In these circumstances, you probably will experience some weight gain, but it's not because of the dairy per se, it's because of the refined sugars and carbohydrates that dairy is often paired with. The second thing you've heard a million times about dairy is that it's inflammatory. And in fact, this is probably even the biggest thing you've heard a million times. And you've likely heard it from probably every different type of wellness expert, whether it be the USDA food guideline pyramid advocates, or even the ultimate like wellness guru folks. But the idea that dairy is inflammatory also appears to be largely untrue. In fact, a recent 2019 review of 16 different studies found that there was no association between dairy and inflammation. And in fact, there's often a decrease in inflammatory markers with increased dairy consumption. And what's even further more interesting about this is those benefits were from people ranging from really healthy folks to those with metabolic abnormalities. So it's not just like one type of person that can benefit. And then a very recent 2022 meta-analysis based on an even larger number of studies showed that a higher total dairy intake could actually lower an inflammatory marker called C-reactive protein, as well as other markers of subclinical inflammation. Now, the one caveat here is if you're allergic. Obviously, if you're allergic, you're going to experience that increased inflammation from dairy regardless. But if you're not allergic to dairy, the research is showing that if you've been avoiding dairy to try and decrease your inflammation, it might be time to add back in that Greek yogurt. Okay, the third thing you've heard a million times about dairy is that it causes acne. In fact, this is one of the main reasons why I didn't have dairy pretty much my entire life. I grew up vegetarian, but even though I was vegetarian, I did didn't even have dairy really that often. And when I did start adding dairy back in about like six years ago, I was pretty nervous to do it. <laughs> I thought for sure it's gonna trigger so many breakouts, I was going to have acne because that's what you hear all the time. But it turns out this idea that broad spectrum dairy causes breakouts in people isn't really the case either. Now, certain types of dairy may cause breakouts in certain types of people, but this really comes down to if you're lactose intolerant or not, and if the dairy that you're consuming is high in lactose. Now, according to the American Academy of Dermatology Association, there is some association that milk, but especially skim milk, could increase some people's risk of acne. But interestingly, they also state that there's no evidence showing that acne is related to other forms of dairy like yogurt or cheese. The difference? the lactose content. Milk is going to be the highest lactose containing dairy product. But once you start fermenting it or aging it, the lactose content significantly goes down. And considering it's been estimated around 65% of people have some degree of lactose intolerance, they're likely reacting to the lactose, not necessarily dairy in general. Now, I definitely will experience breakouts if I drink milk, which is sad because I actually now really like the taste of milk, but I have zero reaction to multiple servings of cottage cheese, butter, Greek yogurt, heavy cream that I have throughout the and if you're not lactose intolerant, you probably don't have to worry about this at all. Okay, the fourth thing you've heard a million times that isn't necessarily true is that dairy will make you bloated. Now, again, this is true if you are lactose intolerant and if you're consuming high lactose dairy products. Because if you're lactose intolerant, your body doesn't have the enzyme to break down the lactose within your small intestine. So instead, your gut bacteria is going to have just a absolute field day and munch on all that lactose. And when they're munching on that lactose, they're producing little bacteria farts as a result. And it's that bacteria farts like 
can cause the distension and gas within your own small intestine, which then leads to that feeling of bloating. So again, if you are lactose intolerant, opting for the low lactose versions of dairy would be your best option. If you're not lactose intolerant, it's not a problem. Okay, the fifth thing that's also a really important one to talk about that you've heard a million times before is that dairy causes heart disease. Not only has this been found to not be true, it's actually quite the opposite. There's this recent meta-analysis of a bunch of studies on dairy and heart disease. And I wanna highlight a few things that it found. First, it says dairy and all-cause death and cardiovascular disease risk. And it found that by eating fermented dairy products like yogurt or kefir, it actually had an inverse relationship with cardiovascular disease and all-cause mortality, which means that it could be protected Protective. It found that especially having a generous serving of Greek yogurt and including cheese can be quite protective. It even found possible improvements on blood pressure. And remember, this is a study looking at a lot of different studies. So its findings are a lot more strong than any single study alone. So not only did the study find that dairy consumption had zero negative effect on blood pressure, but if anything that you actually saw some positive benefits to blood pressure, particularly again with fermented dairy products. It even found research on cholesterol and triglycerides. And it found that over Overall, dairy had zero detrimental effect on cholesterol or triglycerides, but in fact found that, again, fermented dairy products could even improve these markers. And to top all that off, especially if you're using dairy products from grass-fed sources, it's really rich in heart health and bone health protective vitamin K2. This is something that's really hard to find in other food sources. You can really only find it in grass-fed dairy, specifically pasture-raised eggs. <laughs> and a fermented soy product called natto or nato. I'm not sure on the pronunciation, but I'm sure I'm gonna get a lot of comments telling me how to pronounce it, but it looks like this. <laughs> but especially in grass-fed dairy products, vitamin K2 is really rich and it helps to remove calcium out of the arteries and put it into your bones, which is super important for your heart and your bones because if that calcium is left in your arteries, it could lead to calcification of your arteries and increase your risk of heart disease. Plus, if the calcium never gets out of your arteries and can't get into your bones, then that can increase your risk of osteoporosis. So especially if you're consuming grass-fed dairy products, you're able to get that vitamin K2 to get the calcium out of your arteries and into your bones. All of this is why even though I didn't grow up eating dairy, I eat dairy multiple times throughout the day and I've never felt better. In fact, you can check out one of my favorite smoothie recipes that uses fermented Greek yogurt with this video right here. Also, if you're new to my channel and you love this science fact information, make sure you subscribe right here. I come out new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. All right guys, thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you in my next video.